I think aligning with the goals and the aspects of the people you're working with, whether it's our instructors to the celebrities is a really key part of being our success in the platform. It's not just like a quick hit where you're hiring a celebrity and you know it's a big marketing campaign. It's truly getting them involved in the company and helping them accomplish their goals as well. Welcome back to the Fit Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Venary. Today, I'm joined by FitOn co-founder and CEO, Lindsay Cook. In this episode, we discuss the company's digital fitness platform, its recent $40 million funding round, and the acquisition of corporate wellness company, PeerFit. Plus, Lindsay shares FitOn's plan to build an omni-channel fitness bundle. Let's get into it. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome to Fit Insider. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Looking forward to the conversation today. Certainly a lot to discuss, but uh, maybe just to kick it off, can you introduce yourself and FitOn? Sure thing. I'm Lindsay Cook. I'm the CEO and founder of FitOn. Um, And FitOn kind of came from a little bit of my personal experience. I was an executive at Fitbit in the Bay Area. I was the head of the consumer devices group and responsible for launching a lot of wearable devices for about five years. And Um, Just got really immersed in the health and fitness category and spent a lot of time in the app store and was pretty underwhelmed with a lot of the products in the space. A lot of them were literally gifts of someone doing a push up or a sit up and pretty rudimentary products and not something premium that kept me motivated. And being an executive, I have two kids too, I had no time to fit in fitness and really saw there was a huge opportunity for someone to come in and really democratize fitness for the masses and you know, make fitness more accessible without needing very expensive hardware and equipment. And super fortunate, I ended up teaming up with my co-founder, Russell. He was the founder of All Trails. If you're familiar with All Trails, it's a very popular hiking app for the outdoors. And we really joined together to disrupt the digital health and fitness category. And our goal was really, how do you democratize fitness with a really innovative technology-driven solution where you didn't have the barriers to entry of expensive equipment and our total focus has been leveraging the ubiquity of the smartphone and giving everyone this magical gym-like experience in their pockets. And um, so what we do is we really bring together really high-end premium content, kind of like mini movies in your pocket and really wide variety of trainers and celebrities and really pushing on the social experience too. So you can work out with your friends and kind of motivate each other with that social accountability and been super um, fortunate with our growth over the last several years. We've been in business now about three years and we have about 10 million members on FitOn who've done over a billion workout minutes on the platform. And last year alone, we had about uh, 235% more downloads than Peloton Digital and about 6X Beachbody. So been really, really breaking out in the category with just a really awesome product, a lot of five-star reviews and um, really our vision and our goal is how do we get to hundred million members working out on fit on every week? Yeah, that's really exciting talking about, uh, my next kind of question was going to be, give us a sense of the growth or the user base, however you would, you know, define those metrics. And I think you did that in terms of not only are they growing substantially, uh, as you see at fit on, but, uh, maybe outpacing some of the other popular, um, fitness apps that, or platforms that people think about, um, what do you attribute that to, right? You know, when you look at lots of different competitors across the space, even if you're focusing kind of solely on digital content, um, not as much even on the equipment, like you mentioned, um, how are you differentiating and then what's kind of contributing to that growth that you're seeing? Yeah. I mean, I think the growth came from really building a better product and making it more accessible. I mean, a lot of if you look at the fit, fitness industry, you know, most, um, if you think about like a typical gym or a, or a traditional fitness app, most of them would kind of lock you out of the, the system. You know, they, they wanted you to sign up, pay up front, but they didn't really care if you showed up and worked out. We're kind of the, we've really flipped the industry on the head and really focused on engagement and retention and, and really building an active user base of people that are actually using the product. And we're super fortunate our first year in the business, we actually didn't focus on monetization. We just focused on engagement and retention and how do you get people using the platform and telling everyone they knew about it and then really move to turn on monetization after that. And so it was hugely helpful for our growth. We're really trying to design more of a high organic growth machine with massive word of mouth. We're over 50% of FitOn's growth today comes from word of mouth and people telling 
their friends about it, um, and then really layering in you know, a better product experience with a social experience on top of it. So social and community has really been the foundation of the product. So when you join FitOn, we encourage you to add your friends to the platform, take a workout with them. You get notified when your, your friend does activity on the platform and you can invite your friends and coworkers to participate with you, um, whether it's challenges or we have a really cool feature called Fit On Party where you can do a live workout together um, and have an awesome social feed. And so Um, A lot of it was about designing a better product with, you know, kind of a five-star product experience that was better than what was out there. And a lot of the company's focus was my background was technology. Um, My co-founder and the team's all background was technology. So we really happened to love health and fitness, but we were building a technology product in the health and fitness space. And it was less about an individual trainer or um, kind of locking people out of the platform. It was about inviting them in, making it super motivating and sticky and engaging once you were in the platform and really trying to focus on um, kind of word of mouth and and social sharing as a, a key component. And I think one of the other things we've done, which is um, is not just made it a fitness app, we're really expanding beyond health and fitness and broadening the offer where you can work out on Fit On. You can um, we have uh, mindfulness content, we have nutrition. Um, we're really expanding into to more kind of managing chronic health conditions and really about creating that. Um, the kind of the number one wellness companion in your pocket that is there for you throughout your day. Yeah, I think it makes a ton of sense. And you see a shift just in terms of how people approach quote unquote fitness is now shifting to overall well-being and the holistic aspect with, you know, mental health being a component of that, nutrition being a component of that, where you know, previously these things were all siloed and you had to go to all different types of platforms and all different types of memberships. Uh, So we see that kind of moving into one place and certainly fit on pursuing that strategy. Um, You talked a little bit about maybe in the first year, not focusing on monetization and obviously as it's evolved now to figuring out what that, that strategy is in terms of the paying membership. I've seen some things, um, you know, different courses, different kind of content packages. How do you think about the business model now and how are you kind of pursuing that moving folks from this free membership kind of down that funnel, maybe to that paid membership? Absolutely. I mean, I think we want to create a, a magical experience for free customers um, where we know that, you know, a majority of people might ne- never participate in the pro subscription product. The, the goal is really just making a um, a product where we have enough, and you've seen very successful subscription businesses um, in the category do this. Um, and you know, we, we really truly believe in our, our freemium model, and it's the way to go. And um, I think a lot of it has been just testing and um, being really agile on the product, and trying to find the the right place where you know people are are um, finding extra value for the the features. For instance, we have um, amazing meal plans and premium music and. Um, the ability to, to connect with wearable devices and offline downloads that are kind of those extra uh, features that help take you to the, the next level. But we also have a magical experience for free users. And it's just a ton of testing and optimization. That's kind of how we we are very data driven. We lean on the data and constant iteration has been, been very much, I would say, the culture of the company since its founding. And in the last three years, we've done over 100 um, releases on the platform, which is um, an insane amount. I think we release every like about two features or updates every every few weeks. And so, if you look at the innovation in the category historically, normally most apps do an app update every six months, or um, you see a few a few times a year. And I feel like the part of it has just been our linear focus on really leading in digital fitness. You know, a lot of other players I see in the category, you know, their PNL is based on like you know selling a treadmill or a um, really expensive hardware equipment or selling apparel and things. We are just very linear focused on leading in digital fitness. And through a lot of iteration, we have have really been focused on kind of growing um, our subscription business and we care about monetization, but we know that um, if we are really successful at creating a better product with a really high organic growth engine to it, you know, the monetization will follow. Yeah. The, you know, down that path, when you talk about the organic growth aspect of it. And I think you had, you previously talked about it as the the word of mouth, the social sharing, inviting other people. Um, it's also bringing to mind a little bit of, 
you know, the Airbnb, I think it was Brian Chesky who talked about like, what is a 11 star experience look like to build like the most magical product? Uh, so when you talk about it, it, it seems very in line with that. Um, in terms of like paid growth or even just growth outside of like that organic aspect, are there particular strategies or channels that you're seeing that are being, you know, moving the needle more than others because, and I asked that kind of question because when we talk to founders at all stages, right, it's becoming so competitive that um, it's like, oh, well, if we can't figure out that channel that is organically growing and we don't have just an outsized, um, you know, kind of capital to throw at the kind of growth engine, how do we do this? So I'd be curious, you know, what is working for you from those kind of growth channels? Yeah, I mean, we really optimize across a number of different digital channels and all the ones you could think of. And I think it's a lot of testing and iteration and figuring out, I mean, some channels are going to work for you some weeks and some weeks they're not. And you have to be really, really flexible. Um, I think we've been really fortunate with our product and, you know, even in the kind of current marketplace to, to diversify across a number of different channels. So you're never totally dependent on you know, one channel over, over another. Um, a lot of our focus have been, for instance, like figuring out TikTok now, because it seems to be the the new channel where everyone, um, you know, kind of all the eyeballs are as a perfect example. But I think it's a lot about trial and iteration and, um, you know, constantly figuring out where the your core user base is going to be. How do you capture their attention um, and and get them into the platform and try to do it more through organic growth? Um, obviously, you know, this is a category that's really noisy. You, you got to put in some level of, of paid spend to, to continue to grow. But I think if you are really optimizing for thinking about organic growth as, as much as you are paid growth, that's going to be what really sets you up for success. Yeah. And just being ready. And, and like you said, flexible that as that shifts, as it inevitably does, like from platforms to behaviors, uh, you kind of have to lean in and, and move with it. Um, Another aspect that comes up both across the industry and you mentioned it is like the celebrity partnerships, leaning on them to create content, tapping other kind of fitness instructors who maybe already have an established audience. Uh, I think you've done a great job at doing both of those things. Do you see that as being, you know, right now it's, it's almost become table stakes, right? That you whether it's a musician or an instructor or celebrity, somebody with some type of established audience or eyeballs, um, different fitness brands kind of partnering with them in, in different types of ways. Um, do you see that as being a sustainable strategy going forward? Is that, you know, difficult to secure those partnerships or maybe how has it played out? And do you see that continuing to be the case? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, um, celebrity, our relationship with celebrities have been kind of definitely an important part of fit on and something we've been just thrilled to get the chance to work with folks like Jonathan Van Ness or Gabrielle Union or Julianne Huff or Halle Berry. And most recently the D'Amelio family. And I think that kind of part of, um, why we've had the, the, the chance to work with them is very much the, represent what fit on was all about and using, you know, we've been really building a brand about fitness and wellness as this form of self-care. And, um, the whole idea is, you know, if you can just take like a 10 minute workout in the middle of the day or a 20 minute stretch before bed, you're, you're better taking care of yourself. And we've really aligned ourselves with kind of the, the celebrities we felt were the kind of the promoters and, you know, the leaders and kind of this self-care movement. And, um, you know, gone after people that are organically posting workouts, you know, before we even worked with Gabrielle Union, she was promoting workouts. She li loves health and fitness. And so I think it was a really organic fit getting um, people that were already really interested in the space involved in the company that um, because they believed in the mission and, and part of it was also about they were able to give back um, amazing workouts to their communities too, and get the chance to, to work out with them, which has been also great in terms of, of, of helping us grow as a company. And so, you know, it's, whether it's the celebrities or I would say, are we have unbelievable, amazing world-class fitness trainers on the platform? We've even partnered with, um, awesome gym brands like Orange Theory Fitness and, um, Exponential Fitness and CrossFit. And part of it is because we built a very large community in this in the space of people that are active and 
um, you know, when when some of these celebrities or or trainers want to reach people, the exposure you can get on Fit On is just like nothing else that we, that has happened in the category in terms of of getting access to people that are just health and fitness enthusiasts. And so it's it's been a, a great opportunity where we're not competitive with the gyms. We're actually partners with the gyms. We're partners with these trainers. Um, they, we are partners with these celebrities, and we're really helping uh, grow their brands in the health and fitness category. And I think aligning with the goals and the aspects of the people you're working with, whether it's our instructors to the celebrities is a really key part of being our success in the platform. It's not just like a quick hit where you're hiring a celebrity and, you know, it's a, a, a big marketing campaign. It's truly getting them involved in the company and helping them accomplish their goals as well. Sure. Yeah. The alignment uh, I think makes a lot of sense when you think about and just their interest and focus in this space and being able to authentically promote it and engage. Um, maybe the last question in the weeds about the kind of platform and, and model. Um, one other thing that you had said was around building this experience and making sure that people were having a, a magical experience as, as you described it. And then, um, keeping them engaged, right? So it, the retention component is huge when you're talking about digital fitness or any type of digital subscription. Um, but then you have this added layer with fitness where willpower at some point fades away and churn is inevitable. And that's that's true of digital, that's true of in-person when you have a gym membership and maybe you just stop going or don't use it as much as you intended. How do you think about the adherence or retention component to make sure that people are engaged and um, to your point, like continuing to use the product. Yeah. I mean, I think engagement has really been such a core part of what we've been doing. And um, I think that the, you know, what fit on is really differentiated as we focused on engagement. I think majority of fitness, health and fitness apps out there, literally you just pay up front. They don't really care if you ever, you know, enter, you know, enter that door and use the product because they already got their their money at the door. And I think that's where we have really flipped things on the head and and focused on engagement from the very get go, you know, beginning of the company. And it was about you know building a five star product experience where you know most reviews of our app was like, where, where have you been all my life? <laughs> or um, you know, I love this. Uh, review from a woman said it's better than target. And, um, I feel like that's a very strong statement. And I think it was because we, we were kind of one of the first players that was really focused as much on the experience inside the app as getting you inside the door. Um, and so it's through a lot of different mechanisms. We focus on engagement, whether it's the quality of these workouts, making them really bite-sized. So, you know, they're, it's approachable. Most people don't have necessarily 30 minutes to an hour to work out in a day. And so making these, I would say, bite-sized movie style content that is really accessible, um, layering in the social experience. It's a lot about life cycle marketing and um, introducing people to, you know, you're not going to want to work out necessarily every day. Is it sometimes reading uh, an amazing article or uh making a recipe and a lot about introducing new content. One of my biggest learnings, I was working on hardware for five years and, you know, I found the hardware game was very um, hit driven, right? And, you know, the second you launch a, a device, you know, within a month, it almost already feels like it's already old. The beauty of software is really about bringing new content all the time. I love that when you work in digital you know, we could film some workouts with Halle Berry. I think we launched them within five days on the platform and um, could build this, you know, more broader wellness solution where sometimes it's about a workout. Sometimes it's about eating healthy. Sometimes it's about learning and education. And so having that power of also this awesome hybrid solution where, you know, fit on is a great companion to the gym. It can be a replacement on the days when you don't have to go to the gym or when you're traveling. And so it's kind of this opportunity to, to, to meet the customer where they're at and, and really build a product that um, acknowledges that these people are interested in health and wellness. They are motivated. They need that extra encouragement in which we offer and just always keeping it new and interesting. And, you know, I think we've seen some great results before we, when we've looked at like industry average day 30 retention for the category, it's pretty low. It's like 15%. And we've been lucky and fortunate to be about 4X that today by just really focusing on engagement and caring so much about that. Um, it's not about day zero and like entering 
the app. It's about how do we keep them engaged throughout the pipeline with really new, interesting content and mechanics into the product. Yeah, I think you put that really well talking about the the various aspects and what you're considering. And it's part of a broader shift, you know, in talking to a lot of founders. Now you're seeing this, the crossover where it's people who have some type of experience in the health and fitness space, but also have this kind of uh, laser-like focus on the tech on the software, on all these aspects that go beyond that and merging those has really created some really compelling uh, business models and opportunities. And I think it's it's positive and continues to reshape the industry that w- was for so long kind of like confined off to the side by itself where you know, people were passionate about it, but it didn't have these kind of breakout, um, you know, whether it was founders, talent, visions yeah. to be able to execute on the level that you see with a lot of technology or software companies. Um, so that certainly shines through when you're, you're talking about it. Um, thinking about how the industry is continuing to shift, the company FitOn has raised some like $70 million to this point. The most recent funding round um, was $40 million. And, and that came with news that you were acquiring uh, PeerFit, um, so I've talked to Ed on the podcast before for folks, if they're not familiar, they can check that out. Um, but really like a, a corporate wellness solution, but really focused on helping people find fitness near them or digitally and, and thinking about how we bring that into the workplace, but also healthcare. Um, but I'll let you kind of talk about it. What motivated you to do that deal and, and how do you see the companies combining forces going forward? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ed and I actually met on a panel together during COVID um, that was hosted um, and just really hit it off and was super impressed with him and um, what he was building. It was it was just it was very interesting timing at Fit On. We were really working on building the largest health and fitness platform and we had this vision how we can make fitness more accessible and, you know, make, you know, bring these gyms in your pocket anywhere you went um, when you didn't have the time to go to the gym. And you know, PeerFit was really mobilizing employees in a different way by getting these health plan participants to participate in going to the gym. And, you know, I felt like we were both disrupting our categories in in different ways. We were, um, you know, I was looking at a lot of these, what I felt were underwhelming health and fitness apps that weren't really investing in the product and and kind of helping customers really um, accomplish their health and fitness goals. And then we were looking in the kind of broader healthcare space, you know, there were a lot of, I would say, underwhelming solutions for health plans and employers in the category where no one had really focused it. If you had even looked at like, um, look up what like a senior workout looks like typically, or, or um, you know, any in any of the space, they're, they're really kind of not high quality content, um, not really focused on engagement and health outcomes. A lot of solutions that were focused on, you know, making you buy very expensive hardware and equipment for your company to to be able to participate. And so we really saw the power of of kind of this hybrid solution for today's hybrid users, and especially in today's world where there's the gym, there's the at home workouts. We wanted to bring together kind of the best in consumer and the best in healthcare as this powerful at home and in studio solution. So you had the opportunity with PureFit to go access some of the best gyms and get the chance to work out in person. Um, but also, you know, through Foot On, where we were fo- focused on deeper engagement and really high quality content, we realized there was such an opportunity to mobilize not only consumers, but employers, as well as health plan participants together as one. And so, and we noticed no one else was doing that. It was definitely a great insight from my experience at Fitbit, where, you know, the consumer and the healthcare business really help Um, complement each other in a really significant way because we're all consumers. We're all employees. (laughs) We are all parts of health plans. And so we felt like we could really deliver together an awesome solution that would enable employers and health plans to accomplish their goals, but also do it with this massive consumer brand in the space that was really disrupting things. Sure. There's a lot of different components and potential opportunities as you think about. So now you have the healthcare aspect. So how are you incentivizing health plans or employers to maybe pay for the fit on membership? Then there's the aspect of peer fit was also increasing kind of engagement access to physical gyms and studios. 
So is there some type of, you already mentioned working with some other fitness brands, um, brick and mortar fitness brands. So is there a, a part where it's like, Hey, we can bundle in with them as well. Um, what, what maybe does that look like? Like, I mean, a part of our vision is selling a more hybrid solution to employers and health plans where you can get access to peer fit and get access to this massive gym network and continue to work with the best gyms out there to, um, you know, get people in person in studios, but then also layer in a digital experience, um, like fit on, on top of it. And so, so that's definitely where we're headed about giving, um, kind of the healthcare community an option for an amazing hybrid solution. Then the other piece that has kind of come up a couple of times and the way that it seems like you're approaching it is, uh, you know, folks that are requiring you to purchase, uh, a maybe high priced piece of equipment and that you being maybe in opposition or, or, uh, another option outside of that. But something is starting to take place is now these different partnerships where content providers are now putting their content on maybe a piece of hardware or certainly on like a, you know, Apple, TV, Google, Samsung, different kind of, we've described it as um, pipes and platforms, like who's creating what and where does that content live? And maybe you don't manufacture every piece of it kind of like vertically integrated, but you certainly want to be visible there and have people access you there. Um, how are you thinking about that in terms of like omni-channel or hybrid? Yeah. I mean, I think we've been really focused to date on kind of reduction of barriers in the category and focused on amazing digital fitness content and you know, definitely openness to working with larger hardware partners as well. But our focus has really been on the content itself and and building the best digital fitness solution and um, kind of hybrid work solution in today's market. I think um, there's a lot of hardware players out there spending their time on, on, on building product. And um, we've been really focused more on kind of reducing those barriers where you don't need expensive hardware equipment to participate and um, you don't need a Peloton bike. You don't need a mirror. you got your phone. It's in your pocket. It's with you wherever you go. You've got your gym down the street and really making health and wellness more accessible has been a part of, of where we've been really focusing in the category. Um, and so, you know, there's definitely going to be a place for hardware and software in, in the future and, um, and expensive equipment. We are really, you know, very linearly focused on, on being that leading digital fitness solution and also partnering with the other players in the space like gyms. And as we mentioned, we've been working with Orange Theory Fitness and CrossFit and Exponential Fitness and, um, you know, really br bringing more awareness and exposure to these awesome health and fitness brands and getting our communities excited about them. So definitely excited about where we're headed in terms of continuing the partnership with some of the biggest gyms in the category as well. Yeah, absolutely. And now, maybe as we get towards the end of the conversation, looking ahead a little bit, so you have, you know, new funding, certainly now integrating a separate company, bringing PeerFit into the mix, figuring out those different uh, channels and opportunities. As you think about the roadmap and maybe the, the priorities, um, no shortage, right, of kind of things that you're working through. But is there anything that you're particularly excited about or that maybe we should be on the lookout for as you now go through, call it the, the rest of 2022? Yeah, I think there's a couple key areas we're really going to focus on the rest of the year. One is continuing to build on the social experience, especially, you know, the positive social encouragement of our users is one of the reasons people love Fit On today. And so, Kind of finding ways that you can continue to work out and interact with your friends and your coworkers on the space. Continue to invest in social is a big one for us. Um, continuing to expand the offering on Fit On, making it a really comprehensive solution. So have an amazing opportunity. You know, a huge platform over a thousand workouts today. There's beyond you know high quality experiences in, in themselves, but really growing to focus on nutrition. Um, and, and really kind of doing what we had done to fitness and making nutrition more of a habit with these bite-sized um, kind of goals you can set up in the platform. Also investing in, in kind of broader wellness content and health conditions, things like helping go after MSK or diabetes or stress management and really making fit on a broader wellness solution. Um, International is another really key priority for us as we're, we do believe that FitOn is a, a concept that works internationally and really expanding our ability to, to reach people in other countries. And, and lastly, but 
probably most importantly, is really just continuing to invest in the healthcare and corporate wellness side of the business and how do we drive more engagement and health outcomes and really reduce the burden of these massive healthcare costs for employers and health plans. And um, we've done kind of what what I learned in my career and early on was um, spent a lot of time at, at Fitbit tracking and, and you know, ever, like we're tracking everything, right? And a lot of these players in the category today are, are tracking a lot of stats, but there's less guidance and coaching. And I think that's been one of the things that's really differentiated fit on in the experience and, and how we've built the product is it's much more guided. You feel like you have this amazing personal trainer and wellness solution in your pocket um, that expands fitness, that expands nutrition, it expands mental health, it's expanding into chronic conditions. And I think really continuing to invest in, in offering a more guided experience, offering more coaching and really focusing on deeper engagement and health outcomes is absolutely where we're headed. Yeah, super exciting. Maybe one follow up there when you bring up the coaching aspect is that do you think about it or consider that you would actually have like a personal training service where you could uh, have access to a one on one coach? Or, or do you think about it more in terms of just kind of a deeper relationship where that feels right, like you, you have that guidance, but it might not be a human coach that's like programming something for you? I mean, I think one of the things that makes our, our product really special today, if you experience a workout, you already feel like you have a trainer, like has like somehow transported into your um, home and is there with you and really guiding you along the way. And so um, we have quite an amazing guided experience today. There's definitely exploring all aspects of coaching in the future and the best way to approach it um, and make it personal. Um, definitely not committed yet to the, to um, the exact way we will do it, but we will do it like everything else we've done on this platform today, which is through a lot of testing, a lot of iteration and really following what our customers have been asking for on the platform. Yeah. And, you know, as you ran through that list, kind of like the roadmap and opportunities, certainly a lot to look forward to, a lot to keep up with. Uh, maybe folks, if they're not interested or they wanted to learn more, where would you point them to uh, kind of check out FitOn? Yeah, you can actually just download FitOn right on the App Store, both iOS, Google Play Store by searching FitOn. You can download on your Apple TV, Roku, or going to FitOn.com. Well, that, I hope that uh, folks do check it out or maybe they already do and are, are continuing to enjoy that experience. But uh, I appreciate it, Lindsay, you spending some time chatting with us today and I'm very excited to share the conversation. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Joe. Really appreciate it. 